Hey everyone! So today we're doing something just a little different. We are flying the search and rescue server with none other than Kazmo. Now, if you don't know Kazmo, he is a former Kiowa warrior and Apache pilot with a couple of thousand hours of flight time behind him. In the last year or so he's also gotten pretty heavy into DCS and now he is the host of the Kazmo TV YouTube channel and the Low Level Hell podcast, both of which I encourage you to check out. You'll also find a video of tonight's shenanigans from his perspective in his cockpit over on his channel. So if you'd like to see that, um, then I definitely recommend heading over there. From my perspective, this was a really exciting opportunity, you know, to get to fly with somebody who has that kind of experience and that kind of history in the real thing. Uh, it was really cool. So big thank you to Cosmo for uh, reaching out to set this up. So back in November, Cosmo reached out to me to um, ask if I could show him kind of the basics, the ins and outs of the hip. He had picked it up during a sale and just hadn't gotten around to flying it yet. He was also kind of interested in the lift side of things. Being a former scout attack pilot, that's just something that he hasn't really done much of. So maybe once external cargo is not bugged anymore, we can give this another try and do some sling loading stuff as well. But for the meantime, we jumped on the search and rescue server and decided to do a couple of different things. So the first half of the video is on the new firefighting mode. And the goal there is just to pick up water from anywhere you can find it and then transport it to the raging wildfire then try to extinguish it. It's a pretty unique thing in DCS. I've never seen anything like it anywhere else. And there's some strategy involved too. You know, where do you put the water? How fast do you fly? How do you stop the spread? That kind of thing. So after that, we switched over to search and rescue missions, and I'll talk a little more about those as they come up around the midpoint of the video. But in the meantime, enjoy the firefighting footage, and I'll catch up with you soon. So there's a ton of water all around behind us. You can pick up water from there. You can also pick up water from lakes and rivers or basically anywhere in the map you can find water and think that you can comfortably hover over it for a minute. Okay. Well, so I'm just backing up. Oh, that collector was touching. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, you're at 30% fuel with no weight, so yeah, you're gonna be picking up at like three and a half degrees collective here. Yeah, yeah, it didn't take much. All right, so we got a Huey over here hanging out with us. Yeah, that's our threat right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's within, what is it, 6.9 rotor discs. <laughs> yeah. Mover measurements. Yep. All right. Yeah, he's, he's getting closer. Yeah, a little bit. So all we do is just come and hover over the water, and you got to be nice and low. Your ground effect's good up to 20 meters. And you want to hover somewhere under there, and then it should automatically start counting up and tell you how you're filling your belly tank on this thing. Oh, so it not. automatically starts to pick up water. Yeah, as soon as you stop moving, uh -huh. it'll just start filling it. Okay. And what am I looking at to give me an indication of this? It'll come up as a message. Oh, at the top I see. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. loading water. Okay. Huey's all done. He can't carry as much. Yeah, I saw they even had gazelles. Yeah. Flourish. You can carry 50 pounds of water. Have fun. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Red solo cup. I fill you up. Yeah, so you can, like I said, just go straight up from here if you want to, or you can pick up speed along the water first and then climb out. Sure. Oops. Now, is there any trick to the, the dropping of smoke? Like, what are we trying to accomplish here? So I'm going to just do a little flyover and have a look at the fire first, but the idea is to try to hit the outsides of it and soak that area with water to stop the spread. And then when you come back, you start working your way in from the outsides. Now, does it, it's expanding and growing based on the wind or? Yep. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah, it expands in a cone based on the wind direction. Okay. It's actually kind of a cool system. Yeah, it's wild. All right. Yeah, that's quite a line. It just seems to expand outwards in a big, long line. All right, so I'm going to turn around past this end of the fire and then try to drop water coming in towards the center of it. I don't know if there's any advantage to higher altitude here or if just flying right over the top like this is the same. Uh. Do that, and then just before I get to the water, I'm going to try F1, start dropping.
And I'm out. By the time I got to the stream. Well. Oh. Goes fast. Now, obviously there's no uh, animation of you dropping the water, but is there... I'm assuming some of the smoke disappears, or how does that work? Yeah, so you'll see the count drop down to zero as the water drops, and then uh -huh. it'll give you an indication of whether it was just a good drop on the fire, whether you missed, or whether you actually put out some columns of fire as well. Okay. Interesting. All right, I'll start dropping as I cross the stream, I guess. All right, good drop on fire. That's good. Hold on, I guess we should try picking up water from the stream, hey? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> try. Okay, I got you in sight. In this configuration, you can auto down so easily. Roll the power back on when you get close. See, I'm used to flying this thing heavy, and I'm used to crashing, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nervous. That's one of the things I was going to try to show you tonight was some of the different configurations and how much of a difference it makes. Yeah. By default, you're loaded up full fuel and just everything on board, and it's a very, very different helicopter. Yeah. All right, I got you there. I'm going to pass you. I'm going to head to this uh, straight section right. right here. I see your shadow. There you go. See if it'll actually let me pick up water here. Yep. All right, I'm loaded up again. All right. So in the Kiowa, were you guys uh, full fuel all the time, or did you guys run partial fuel for most missions? Uh, pretty much partial fuel, just because it was a trade-off between that and ammo. Okay. So we could carry, gosh, what was it, like 720, I think, pounds total. And we would typically fly with 600 to 650. Okay. Um, but, I mean, we always flew max growth weight, you know, mm -hmm. uh, at least taking off. So. All right, I'm coming out. i got you in sight. All right. Yeah, with this thing you carry about 4,400 pounds of fuel. <laughs> mm, yeah. And you don't need anywhere near that. You can fly across the entire peninsula on the Persian Gulf map on half a tank just fine. Yeah, Yeah, when I went to the Apache, like, the, the APU, like, used as much fuel as the Kiowa did per hour. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> All right, I'm going to drop a little bit ahead again. Ten. Yep. Other... I'm not going very fast. I'm not going to cover a whole lot here. That's okay. There. One segment was extinguished. <laughs> One segment. Only like a hundred right. to go. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of makes me wonder, like, is this designed for a crew of ten helicopters or somebody to spend yeah. four hours? Yeah, well, you know, this is interesting for like um, teamwork you know I mean mm. there's because I'm wondering if if I drop right behind you is there any sort of you know benefit probably yeah you're dropping on the same spot trying to put out that end fire faster yeah yeah exactly Now, the only Hilo experience I really have is uh, we used to work out of a Bell 206 Long Ranger for tree planting back in university. Oh, yeah? So okay. I got to ride in on one of those every day, ride in and out. Yeah.
I'm fully loaded. Me as well. Did you head further down the river again? Yeah, same spot. I'm coming okay. up and out now. Yeah, so I was hoping to show you sling loading today, and then I went and tested out the cargo weight thing and realized, yeah, the zero weight cargo bug affects single player as well. So for the last oh, okay. two or three months now, or maybe more, because the testers don't do a lot of sling loading and they haven't noticed, and most people in DCS yeah. don't do a lot of sling loading, none of the cargo has any yeah. weight. So you just pick mm -hmm. it right up and it's, it flies all over the place and then the line snaps and it's not a good experience. Yeah, I've seen guys catapulting and stuff. All right, all right. Start turning. I don't. Okay, I'm I'm short final for the fire here. So okay. Dropping. Yeah, that was a little better in terms of distance. Made it all the way to the river. <laughs> Still nothing put out. Like it just feels like. Oh, am I even accomplishing anything? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I gotta imagine, just, just dropping water on a fire is, I mean, it, it must take just absolute tons of it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because you know, it just vaporizes, you know, it's like as soon as they let go of it, you watch it, and you're like, man, mm -hmm. I can't do shit. Yeah. <laughs> Close to those trees. So I started flying DCS in 2014. Somebody mm -hmm. recommended it as a, I was mentioning to someone, I forget who, probably on Reddit, that I wanted to fly helicopters because I just got a joystick to play for, uh, space sims. And they said, oh yeah, mm -hmm. DCS is like the gold standard, you want to go and fly the Huey. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I gave that a try, and then I gave the hip a try, and then I had no interest in flying the Huey anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you're pretty much a, a hip only guy, seems like. For the most part. I fly a lot of other stuff, like I own most of the modules and I switch between them quite frequently, but I'm nowhere mm. near as familiar with everything else. Yeah. So when it comes to like making content for stuff, I sure I can make a tutorial for the Tomcat, but there's like 50 million people who could make a better one. Yeah, that's the thing that keeps me away from really doing tutorials is I just, I don't, I don't want to know the systems that well. <laughs> yeah, I just want to know enough to be dangerous. Uh, but I don't want to know it so well that I can teach it to somebody else that, that thoroughly. Mm -hmm. I see you. You're dropping. Pumps. What is this? Pumps main tanks failure? Oh, you're uh, low on fuel. Oh. Well, or almost enough. out of fuel. Oh. All right. Well, I'm going to drop this and go. All right. Water's out. Yeah. Dropping water. I'm on your six. Okay, I'm gonna head back to where I think the airfield is. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty neat that somebody could come up with that. Yeah, and that's a fairly recent addition. I don't remember it being there until maybe a few weeks ago. Hmm. Yeah, I almost got to fly these for real. Really? I got, yeah, I, I, I came out of the simulator one day when I was an Apache guy, and uh, my phone didn't work when I was in there, so I come out, and there was just a flurry of, of texts that I'd missed. And uh, a guy that worked with me was like, dude, you're you're getting deployed. And if I call him, I'm like, what's, what's going on? And he's like, yeah, you just got by name requested to go to Afghanistan and fly MI-17s with the Afghans. I'm Holy like, what shit. What the hell are you talking about? Because <laughs> we, we had guys that were doing that, you know, and... Uh, Long story short, basically somebody put my name on there as a placeholder, and placeholders eventually just become the real thing. And <laughs> and uh, but then they found some other guy to, to go. Cause, all right, here's the lake. Look yep. for the see the big lake. radio tower. Uh, yep. Affirm. Okay, so it's down there. Okay, yep. yep. I see stuff. I'm gonna do a swing wide out over the lake and bring it back in. Uh, yeah, I know it would have been cool experience, definitely. Um, though I don't think they flew that much, from what I understand, so. Yeah. It would have been a long year. Yeah, no kidding. But yeah, we'd see him when I went to uh, Fort Rucker to learn Apaches and see MI-17 flying around. It was just so, so surreal, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't expect to see Eastern helicopters. Yeah. 
Alright, come on. Look. You should see me, I'm kind of drifting towards you. Okay. Off your three. Okay. Let me see. Oh, you're down low. Okay. Yeah. So I can like I can give you specs and everything for landing this target altitudes and speeds and all that, but basically it's just put the thing on the thing, put the fan on where you yeah. want to land and just ride yeah. it down at 100 kph or whatever. Okay. All right, I'll land on your right. Okay. You got wheels. Don't be afraid to use them. Yeah, this backward pedal situation is <laughs> <laughs> screwing up my muscle memory. That's part of the reason I don't go fly the Huey more often, is it's just everything's reversed for me. Yeah. Well, I didn't know the Gazelle was the same way, and the first time I flew it, I just spun around. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> to be fair, I knew that going into the Gazelle, and I still spun around and flipped on my head. <laughs> Easy to do. It's a handful to fly that thing. Alright, I knew there was a truck down there, but I've lost sight of it. That's behind you. You're clear. Okay. Alright, coming down. Yeah, the nose is much, I guess, lower than I feel like it should be, so um, my sight picture's all screwed up. Oh, yeah. And you're so far forward that you're trying to do yeah. precision landings and land on a pad, I'm always coming up short. Yeah. So after a few passes of the firefighting, it began to feel like we weren't being very impactful. Between the three of us, we had extinguished a total of one column of fire, and it just didn't seem like we were making much progress. So maybe that's just because we weren't dropping water in the right place, or maybe we were just flying too fast, or maybe we just didn't have enough helicopters the way it's currently balanced. But either way, it seemed like it was time to put that down and try something a little different. So we switched over to search and rescue missions, which, at least in my opinion, is what this server does best. The basic idea, if you haven't been here before or if you haven't watched my previous video here, you've got uh, AI infantry units that spawn randomly around the map and they require rescuing. Your job is simply to fly out, to pick them up, and to bring them back to any of the hospital points on the server. And you can uh, land beside them and they'll hop in, or you can hover over them and hoist them up that way. It all really depends on what your preferences are and what the terrain will allow for. The cool thing is that depending on where you decide to spawn, you could get very nice and easy missions where everybody's just kind of out in a field and it's pretty easy to land next to them. Or you might spawn where we are out in the mountains where landing beside them is almost never possible and you're almost always going to be hoisting, hovering over the trees in some very strange places. So we did a single mission, um, basically just rescuing three people who were stranded at the top of a mountain. And it took us so long to pick up those three people that that was the only mission that we did that evening. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised to see that Cosmo struggled with it about as much as I do, that he uh, took some time to get just the right hover position. Uh, it's, it's hard, you know, it's, um, it's pretty challenging. And if you're looking to improve your helicopter skills, like this is the place. This is absolutely the place to do it. Uh, in general, it's a great server for you to practice basic navigation, takeoffs and landings, and if you want to, some pretty crazy hovering. Now one thing we talked about, and you'll hear it, is uh, how much cooler this would be with multi-crew. And sadly the hip doesn't have multi-crew yet, but fingers crossed, after the hind, I hear that's what they're going to work on. Um, if you have the Huey, and you've got a friend who has the Huey, I cannot recommend enough that you guys get into the same Huey and go fly around and do some missions together and share a cockpit. One of you does some flying, the other one does some navigating. After a few pickups you switch and it's a great way to spend some time, spend a couple hours and just chill out. It's the most fun I've ever had not flying a helicopter and I'm very much looking forward to doing the same thing in other helicopters as they come out or as they get multi-crew added to them. I know that I'd welcome the opportunity to come back and try this again with multi-crew in the hip. It, it can be a bit of a handful, especially hovering in some of these scenarios like you're seeing here. There's a lot going on and having an extra set of hands and eyes would be nice. Anyway, a uh, big thank you to Cosmo for helping to set this up. I hope you guys enjoy the footage, and I'll catch you next time. So I sort of enjoy the differing opinions on cold starts. 
depending on who you are and what your background is. <laughs> yeah. Because all the pilots that I've talked to, they have zero interest in doing cold starts. They've done this a million times. They don't care. This is to relax and have fun. They just want it running. Yeah. And then all yeah, the well, non-pilots. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you get all the people like me who are like the wannabe virtual pilots who have never done it for real, who are like, oh, yeah, I can learn this and I can be good at it and it'll be cool. I actually well, kind I of enjoy going me, through it. I Sure. And like... I enjoy starting the real ones. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes it's kind of a pain, especially when it's like 120 degrees in the cockpit. But <laughs> yeah, but it is fun. I particularly enjoyed starting the Apache. Um, not so much messing with the systems, but just going through the engine startup. But um, I think that's the problem too. Is I I don't mind the procedures, but I don't get the I don't get the I don't get the uh, you know the tangible feedback that I yeah. enjoy of it. You know, it's just like okay, I'm just flipping switches. Yeah, you don't get the rumble um, as the engines come to life. Yeah, you know, and and there's some some stuff going on in the real world, like the crew chief's out there and he's talking to you, and you're, you know, you're doing stuff. So, um, but then the other side of that coin, and, and you have kids, so you know the deal too. It's like my time is valuable. Yes. I don't I don't want to spend a lot of it cranking up. And for me, when I was playing before I started my channel, and if I ever did play multiplayer, you know, shit, I would spend ten minutes, whatever cranking up because i'd have the same idea like all right i'm gonna i'm gonna, I'm gonna play this for real right I'm gonna start <laughs> the engine, I'm gonna taxi out i'm gonna make all the calls and then i take off and i get shot down or i or i glitch out and hit a tree or something yeah and it's like well shit i just wasted 15 minutes of my life getting to this spot and now i gotta do it all over again you know it never it never survives the second attempt <laughs> so okay i'm ready all right I'll turn my fan on you mean your generator indicator? You yeah, might. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> All right, I'm ready. All right, let's go. We'll head out down the valley and see if we can follow the valley in that general direction. Okay. So the last time I tried doing these kind of missions on the SAR server, it was a snowstorm. And have crazy oh, wow. wind. That's awesome. Yeah, it rotates every six hours. Server will restart with thunderstorm, snowstorm, or a nice calm day, or super windy day. Uh, Did a video flying in the rain. It was kind of like a nice way to just kill an hour in an afternoon, and if nobody else was home, just fly around yeah. in the rain, pick people up. Yeah, that's that's a good point it is kind of relaxing because you can just go fly and not have to worry about an SA-10 going through the window or something yeah exactly there's that whole civil side to the DCS that you get to appreciate yeah. a little more in the helicopters yeah yeah because sometimes I just want to fly mm -hmm. you know sometimes I'll get in and do like an ILS approach in the F-16 or something just do absolutely something. I tend to uh, hop in like the trainer jets like the C-101 or whatever and I'll get mm -hmm. in Discord and stream it there, and a few friends will come in. We'll just hang out and chat, and they'll yeah. kind of have me flying in the background, and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's our smoke. So I went a little oh, okay. too far. Yeah. Are you still behind me? Ridge. Yeah, I'm coming over the ridge now. So uh, you're 3 o'clock as you come over the ridge. You should see it just down a little ways. Okay. So they're right at the top of this ridge in the bush. Oh, okay. Yep, I got it. So is there hoist capability, or do you have to land? You don't have to land. You can just hover over top of them, and it'll give you guides oh, okay. to do that. You can also adjust the length of your rope. It's a, you know, a magic invisible rope. But sure. you can adjust the length of it from the F10 menu. And there is uh, F5 adjust rope length. And all that'll really do is change the hover height that you need to be at to pick them up. Alright, well let me uh, slip in here. Yeah, I'm circling around I'm just kind of pointing myself into the wind. Alright, so I'm just kind of hovering and watch if you want to take a stab at it. Alright. So one of the things they say about people who learn to fly and then go into lessons later on is they're overly dependent on instruments and I definitely understand that because I don't get the feedback mm. from the helicopter I have to rely on my instruments more than I could with if I were yeah. the real thing As they always say that that translates into when you start taking lessons you just stare at those instruments yeah 
How close do you have to be? Fairly close. Okay. Within a few meters. I'm at 20 meters now. Okay, 7 meters, 10 seconds to pick up. Ah, I went too far. Oh yeah, you gotta be spot on. Yep. And this isn't a bad spot, you're right at the top of the hill, aside from not having a good reference point for a hover. Yeah. Sometimes they're right up the side of the mountain, and you're hovering in the tailwind, trying to keep steady. Wandering in and out of ground effect. Shit. <laughs> Man. I feel like I'm hovering pretty good here, but... Yeah? Oh, well, it's a nice hover. Drifting forward a little. I'm trying to go back. This is I'm 30 meters, 6 o'clock. I don't know how that happened. Like... Yeah, this is no joke. <laughs> I mean, this is good practice. Like, if you're a... Trying to get good at your helicopter stuff, this is the right place to do it. Yeah. Getting that I feel trim like just right. The ground is just uh, moving around on me. <laughs> he's just wandering around trying to make yeah, your life difficult. Yeah. Yeah, how the hell? How did he go from 7 o'clock to 4 o'clock and not change the distance? Different guy, same distance. I, well, shit. It's gotta stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll never get this dude. There we go. Hovering. Ten seconds. That's a long time. Yeah. Too far. Yeah, without a without something in front of me to look at, it's pretty hard to stay in the same spot. I don't remember it being ten seconds. That's a long time. Oh, I'm too high. <laughs> too far, too high. Yeah. No joke. Yeah, now imagine this, but snowstorm. <laughs> yeah. Too far. Come on, dude. You gotta want it. Yeah, come get the rope. Yeah. Ah, I got him. Nice. That just leaves two. There we go. Eight seconds, seven, six. Got him. All right. Okay. I see two you. Seconds. One second. Jackpot. All right. Yeah, Beautiful. that's the trick. Just narrow down what tree they're hiding in. All right, I'll follow you. Looks like uh, home is straight down there. Okay. Off your one o'clock-ish. Okay. So I've been flying the crew campaign for this helicopter, and it's quite a challenging one. Yeah. But I'm getting into missions where you're sling-loading some pipes, and your engines are potentially going to fail, and you're trying to drop it on a really narrow LZ with very little reference point in front of you. And then they start giving you story stuff. And then they start asking oh, you to update yeah. your nav stuff, and you're like, holy crap, I need another person. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing, like, helicopters are a decidedly crew event. Mm-hmm. Like, trying to do that stuff single pilot is tough. Well, when I first started flying this thing, I thought, oh, yeah, yeah, I don't know why I need three people. I can do all this by myself. <laughs> yeah, what's the sure. third guy? As long as you're just flying around doing nothing. <laughs> uh, yeah. It says I have left. You left? Like like I overflew it. Oh, okay. Like I've already passed it, so. Tell me to have a good flight. <laughs> I've landed at it once before, and I've already forgotten where exactly it is. It's just hidden. I think it's down there with those trucks. Maybe. Let's see. F10, F3. 
Oh yeah, that makes sense. Block. Yeah, this is the this hospital building down oh, here. Oh god, I'm I'm going down. Oh god, oh god, no, no. I'm sorry, people in the back. <laughs> All right, I'll come rescue you. <laughs> yeah. Got five I'm minutes. In. Yeah, that is the LZ though. You're right. Damn it. So <sighs> close. So close. So excited. You know what? You can just walk back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it says we all survived, so that's... There we are. We're all frolicking in the river, it looks like. Uh-huh. Yeah, a couple of you are off playing in the water. Yeah. Well, that was... That was good. So this thing keeps stats, so next time you log on, you'll see how many times you've uh, crashed or picked people up. How many people. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Uh, it's cool. I'm gonna go VRS here and crash too. Yeah. There we go. I'm trimmed for forward flight here. I need to fix that. All right. I'm gonna go try to land. That's a downhill LZ into the wind. That's not fun. Uh. And then it just spams you with, hey, you picked up everybody. Yeah, nice. What a relief. Yay. <laughs> and the question is, can I get you to the hospital before the server restarts? Yeah. It's right there. Five minutes. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Plenty. Of time. Do that twice. Yep. You have arrived at this nondescript building that is apparently a hospital. Yeah. And VRS Here's almost into the ground. Yep. Yep, there you go. There we go. Oh, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> Not like this. Not like this. Say we're down. Nice. All right, I've rescued six units. And then... Yeah, I'm glad I could help your stats. <laughs>